G'day everyone and welcome to Aussie Tech Heads episode 311 on the 11th of October 2012 and it's another Thursday night. Uh, hello, live.thesecrethub.com or, or no, that's a, we've got a new one now, haven't we? AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash live and uh, if you want to join us in the lounge every Thursday night, you can do that. And Aussie Tech Heads brought to you by Aussie Tech Head Hosting. If you're in the uh, market for some hosting, hosting your nice little web page, uh, Give us, a, give us a go. Give us a go. And that's at aussietechheads.com.au forward slash hosting. So, so get amongst it. So as I said, lounge, high lounge, how you all going? Uh, they're all chatting away in there. Squeeze up. There's a few people in there tonight. So um, yeah, don't, don't make any rude noises. All right. So once, you, once we've uh, done the video, you can see the video again. Replay straight from the web page or you can go into the YouTube, or the uh, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash video. Oh, it's all going on. It's all going on. And the paper, um, AussieTechHeads.com.au forward slash paper. Put it on your iPad and uh, you get stories, just not only tech stories, but some business stories and some sports stories, blah, blah, blah. Go and have a look at that. It's not too bad. comes out twice a day, so you're always up to date. Uh, all right, good stuff. Now, what else have we got going on? That's about all. But tonight we have a, a guest and his name is Shane. So we better say good day to Shane before we do too much, uh, too much else. So you know what his voice sounds like. Hello, Shane. How are you going? Hey, Glenn. How are everyone? Good to be uh, with you guys. I'm looking forward to the to the podcast. Um, this is new to me, but um, yeah, yeah, um, good stuff. I can't wait to give it a go. So as you can see, uh, Shane Shane has got the sun shining in the background because that's because he's from Perth. So uh, well done for for. Getting up, or well not up early, but getting home early <laughs> in time for the show. So good stuff. Now, yeah, now excuse to leave work early. Oh, well, this is right. Now, Shane, what can you tell us about your So, so um, you're from Perth and you're into tech. What, what sort of computers and tablets and uh, that sort of stuff? What sort of stuff are you into? Um, I've been involved in um, tech since 1998. Um, primarily my background um, is Windows, but I like to think I've got a foot in each camp because I've got you know, Windows machines, I've got an Android tablet, and I've got an iPhone. Which right. means I've got three feet. Um, <laughs> so you're not yeah, biased. No, it's, just always, <laughs> yeah, it's always just been a, a passion of mine. You know, people are into collecting things. I'm into tech, same as you guys. Yep, good stuff, good stuff. Uh, yeah, so um, now Shane's got these collated some show notes as well for us this week. So he's, he's picked out a few stories that he's interested in. And also around here somewhere is Will. G'day, Will. How are you going? Evening. How are we? Good. Good. <laughs> what have you been up to? As little as possible. Mm. Um, no, I've been just, you know, working and working and injuring my back and working. Oh, yeah, that's no good. What did you do to your back? Uh, it's just my sciatic playing up again. I can't oh, yeah. stand up, I can't sit down, I can't walk, I can't carry stuff, I can't lay down. Yeah, so it's good. Oh, the old sciatic. Oh, <laughs> you get that. <laughs> all right. So, uh, all right. So, Eric is in a bit of a hiatus for the next 10 minutes or so. He's, um, his router or modem is playing up. He's getting some dreadful internet speeds. So, hopefully, he will be joining us fairly soon. Uh, but uh, once again, it's a typical Thursday night. You know, things must go wrong on Thursday nights, on podcast nights. So, but anyway, hopefully he'll be back with us soon. But alas. I don't we... know. I was a bit worried. I shut down my computer last night to restart it for tonight. Mm. And about an hour ago, it actually restarted because it finally finished installing Windows updates. <laughs> well, I didn't have that many updates. I, I did have a it few. Didn't. Up... There was one. Oh, there's something <laughs> wrong with your computer. You'll have to get onto the, uh, you'll have to get onto the um, Windows 8 when it comes out. That must be nearly next week. You're getting close. Yeah, it must be nearly next week. All right. Now, October or something. Yes, that's. I think. I think I've got a story in there somewhere. So we'll have a look at that as we as we get as we get going. Now, where are we going to start? <clears throat> where do you want to start? Let me start with. How about we start, start at one end and work your way to the other end, I suppose. All right. How about we start with. Uh, Aussie tech vendors have no more chances. Now, what is going on here, you might say? Well, the Microsoft, Adobe and Apple, remember that thing how we all pay too much for, um, for software? Or, you know, more than what the US, yes. more than what we do in the US or people do in the US. 
Well, the small country tax. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. So, well, apparently, you know, the, the government has started this inquiry going and all this sort of stuff. Uh, the, the Microsoft, Adobe and Apple have been given multiple opportunities to, be, to become involved in the inquiry. According to the Federal Labor MP and IT Price Inquiry Panel member, Ed Husick. Is that how you say his name? Husick. But they have not yet appeared at the inquiry. Microsoft has made a public submission, um, but uh, the others have not. So this this Ed guy, he's starting to get a bit serious by the sound of it. Uh, the, the committee was formed to investigate the difference between hardware and software prices, as we were just saying. Microsoft, uh, Husek said the committee's next step is to request internal documentation from the vendors outlining the factors caused by the higher local pricing. So it sounds like he's going to start getting serious. He said the committee would have the power to subpoena the vendors to appear and hand over information should the vendors not respond positively to the request. He said a refusal of a subpoena would result in penalties. So, um, yeah, so he, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's coming from the point of view or from the angle that he said if companies like Woolworths and Coles can appear before a parliamentary committee and even the late Kerry Packer can appear before a parliamentary committee, these companies should also appear. So the vendors have the previously said the vendors have previously cited a variety of factors, including GST, shipping costs, regulatory requirements under the Australian consumer law, strict warranties, rent, labour costs, economies of scale, as well as marketing and advertising for higher Australian pricing. I love that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so, so I would imagine that um, Will, Will's not for higher pricing, and uh, neither am I. Um, and what, what's, have you got any thoughts on this subject, Shane? Have you got any thoughts or just, yeah, no, no high prices, we don't want them? Um, no, 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 definitely no high prices. I, like most people, can't understand why they can, how they can justify the fact that we pay more for the same zeros and ones as um, people in America do. Um, you know, gone to the days where they can use the excuse that it's shipping and all that kind of stuff because it all comes from the same website. Yeah, well, that's right. And look, look, I've uh, just ha- actually came across something through the week, and I thought I'd give you a bit of a look at it. Now, you know, Microsoft, they've got the, their subscription to their sort of like their developer part of their network, the TechNet uh, network. Now, I've got here, now I've got here, I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's, uh, I'm not sure what picture is just going to flash up first. You might have to tell me. But actually, while we do that, before we do that, we're getting Eric back through. Hello, Eric. Hello, gentlemen. How are you going? Good. Sorry about that. All right. Is everything looking okay now? Or is it still... Yeah, I've got an eight millisecond ping, so it's all good. Oh, okay. Good stuff. I just needed a couple of resets. Yep. Good. Good. Well, okay, so what we're up to is we're just talking, going through the, the first story of the night, which is the, the high prices for software that we pay uh, yes. over, over other countries. So yes, we're a bunch of suckers, aren't we? Yes. Mm-hmm. So now we just got to the point where I thought I'd just throw something up onto the screen. I was talking about mm-hmm. the TechNet subscription. Now, now this is, this, the TechNet subscription is where you can subscribe to it or you buy it and, and it will give you, um, say, trial or what would you say? Well, full versions but on a developer sort of level for, the, for yep. any Microsoft product that's coming out or that has come out. So now this is, this is obviously in Australia and it obviously would be a smaller market. Uh, so you wouldn't imagine there'd be too much. Like, why would there be price gouging? It's a small market that they're after. Here. So why? But, you know, in the old days, Glenn, when there were physical goods being transported, you know, across oceans, for example, mm. you could understand the high price of, of items because, you know, you're not going to get over here and you can't sell the volume that you would like in America, for example. So I understand that in, in some respects, um, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. Mm. But when you're talking about digital goods, there is no excuse. Mm. Now, I don't know. Now, you're looking at the stream, are you, Eric, there? Yeah, I am. Or whoever, whoever can, you might have to help me out because actually I've, I've got a couple of images, but um, because of the way that it's set up on my screen, I can't actually read them. <laughs> so um, if you tell me which one I'll flash up here first. Now, this is a screen capture from the, from the TechNet site. Now, what I did is I captured the Australian pricing and the, That's right. the US pricing. So what, yep. what pricing have we got up there at the moment? We've got the Australian one, and well, let's st- stick to the TechNet standard, which is the one I grab right. um, every year, $337. Yep. 
Yes. So that'd be the that's the the so the, the standard. lowest version. The lowest version. Yes. Yeah. So now the, that's the, sorry, not the lowest version, but the the least this, expensive option. So now that's the Australian pricing three thirty seven. Now I think my next slide here should be the US pricing. And what would that be? Uh, one hundred ninety nine. Yeah, one ninety nine. Mm. So there's a big difference. And the next, <laughs> the next one up's three forty nine for the uh, professional. Go to the, go to the professional um, with media. Like, so you get the discs as well. That's five ninety nine. That's exactly half of the Australian price. Mm. Mm. So go back to the Australian. So now, now what I'm saying is that now they've cited before that there's uh, GST issues. You know, they say, oh, it's got to be higher because of the GST. Well, that's only ten percent. Plus, plus, I, I went through the shopping cart and went to the end of the shopping cart. And I don't have these photo pictures with me, but if you go to the uh, Aussie Tech Heads Facebook page, I did post them up there. Now, the shopping cart comes, you know, it's got your subtotal plus your yep. tax. Guess what? The, how much the tax yep. was? How much? Zero. And then mm. your total. So I've bought the, Austra- yeah. I've bought the, the, say, the Australian version. But that could be just an accounting error rather than anything else. What on a- but even let's, let's assume there's 10% in that. Let's assume there's 20% in that price. Mm. It's still a lot more expensive than buying it in the States. Mm. Now, another, another thing they're saying is, you know, it's higher labour costs and higher. But, I mean... Uh, oh, like, rubbish. Yeah, rubbish, rubbish. When you ring Microsoft... Hang on, labour costs in China are the same. Yeah. Whether you're selling it in Australia... That's yeah, what or, um, right. US. That's what this. I end- mean, I, yeah. Sorry. Will. I mean, what it basically comes down to is consumer pay. It's the same with our petrol. It's the same with our devices. It's the same with everything. Whatever they can sell a product, and we'll buy that product in the numbers that keeps them happy. They're going to continue to pay for that. Mm. If, it's, yeah, it's what the, it's the, if the market can bear it. That's right. They'll sell it. I'll give you an example in an industry that I know quite well at the moment, which is batteries, whether it's deep cycle car batteries, even for example. I'll give you a classic example. The um, energizer lithiums that you run for digital cameras and, and things like that. A four pack of that in Woolworths is what, 20 bucks? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. No idea. Our buy price that we can buy them from the importer directly, $2 for a four pack. Mm. It's a lot so of markup. the markup is not at the importer's level. And a lot of the time, it's they throw 20 bucks on it because people need it and people will pay 20 bucks for it. Nineteen ninety five. Um, there you go. Yeah, mm. you know, and and um, car batteries are the same. You know, we can import and on sell car batteries, and and we'll retail a car battery. For example, Commodore battery. Let's say one hundred and fifty bucks. We'll we'll retail that for RACQ or RACV or NRMA. You know, the big people that are supposed to be there to help you. We'll sell you the exact same battery, except crappier, for two hundred and twenty bucks. Mm. So there's, there's obviously, yeah, as, as Eric was saying, termed it price gouging, and I think that's probably true. Like they they mm. cite reasons like high rents and all that. And, yes, I think we do have high rents, but I also think that we do have uh, high margins as but well. But you don't have high rents when you're drop shipping. Mm, you don't have high rents when you're downloading stuff. No, no, that's, well, that's right. But not even downloading. Like if you're on eBay, you've got, a sh- you've got a shop on eBay, there's a fair chance that, 90% of the vendors there who say it's going to take one to three weeks to get your goods are drop shipping. All they're there is they're a, they're a digital storefront and then they you purchase a product from them, they send and they, the order they to go the and order. Yep, and yep. the supplier sends it directly to you. So there's no there's no extra freight because you're still only getting shipped once. There's no storage costs, there's no extra rent, there's no nothing. It's well there's no secondary freight. storage costs anyway. Well, there's, yeah, there's the original I mean, storage cost, but that's built into the price that they yeah. get it from the wholesaler. That's right. Yeah, and, and this is the thing. It's, it's getting to the point where I really can't blame the companies for doing it, whether it's a fuel company, whether it's Apple, whether it's Microsoft, whatever. They're going to do it because they do it, they get away with it, yeah. and we still buy the product. So at the end of the day, it's consumer pays and we seem to be the only, the only way you're going to The only way you're going to change behavior is to not... To buy it, yeah. And who's going to do that? Well, well, that, that, well actually, that that's already cool. that's already starting. People who had a gut full, they're all buying everything online now. Mm. You know, I yeah. bought a pair of jeans the other day, Tommy Hilfiger jeans from from the UK. They're two hundred and seventy five dollars here. I got them for sixty five bucks. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so everyone's going. I've had enough. I've had a gut full. There's online now, and I know my size. Bang, mm. get it. 
and people are starting the retailers and the and the people that are selling these overpriced things are starting to realize that we can't keep gouging the consumer we've got to get smarter in order to serve our customers uh, but see there are some having said that there are some retailers that are getting smart to this lowe's for example which is where i buy my microfiber shirts and stuff for work because i need microfiber because battery acid eats cotton um I can order online shirts or trousers or whatever about ten dollars a pair cheaper than walking into a store. Obviously, if I'm buying one pair, I lose because shipping's twenty bucks. If I buy three or four pair, I'm. The thing is, if I'm at the shopping centre going shopping anyway, walk into Lowe's, I'll pay thirty bucks for it, and I can get it now. So I'm happy to pay a dungeon to buy a product in a shop. For the convenience, yeah. That's yep. right. Mm. There is a convenience tax, and I'm all for that. I've got no problems with that. But when there are other options available and you're not smart enough to take advantage of that and you're Harvey Norman or whoever and is complaining that overseas eBay is killing his market, we'll do something about it. Stop bitching and be constructive. <laughs> that's right. Well, that's right. <laughs> all right, Harvey. And I, th- and, I th- and I think that um, and I think that when it comes to software, I think it's a different story because, as we all know, you can, it's, it's on a well, computer yeah. somewhere. It's not even physical. But and even if it, even if it was a CD, how much does it cost to ship a CD these days? Yeah, five dollars. It, does, yeah. it does, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, but uh, yeah, I, I don't, especially when the do- dollar is at parity and the, you know this rort has been exposed for what it really is, and it's a rort. So come on, let's get behind Ed and uh, <laughs> and uh, give it give it to him. Eat lamb. That's Wait, right. That's right. <laughs> right now, well, let's move on. I think we've uh, we've, we've thrown enough at that one. <laughs> so let's. I've got a yeah, yeah. Go next next story. Well, I've got another one that might draw some comments. So we might go with that one to start well, with. You're gonna you're gonna talk about Apple? No. Okay. No. <laughs> I'm gonna go with another one. <laughs> that, that, All right. Because uh, it's look. It's, this this story I, I did. Um, get copy a little uh, quite a bit of information from the story because i thought it was it's probably or i think it was relevant to maybe what is going on and it's about remember a couple of weeks ago we're talking about the data retention that the government wants to bring into the two years of retain the metadata and all this sort of stuff criminals fascist criminals hate them now greens (laughs) senator scott ludlam has said that there are other issues. Never heard of him. <laughs> no, well, he was a, he was apparently doing a bit of a speech today. I think he could have been at the press club, wherever it is. But I think, I don't know if I wrote that down. But anyway, he's doing a speech. Uh, so Green Senator Scott Lud- Ludlam said there, there are other issues in the federal government proposal, proposal for intelligence and security reforms besides the data retention, which oh, are creepy, gosh. which are creepy. For example, internet, this is him speaking okay yeah internet kill switches for targeted populations the ability of asio to install malware on third-party computers who aren't involved in investigations the ability of intelligence agencies to commit crime and then be forgiven for them behind the scenes there's a bunch of other stuff com- stuff coming up behind this, data retention the, the, so this is this is all the sneaky legislation that they're going to try and sneak in on the 31st of december when everyone's at our party what they always do, yeah. Probably. They always do. <laughs> now, one of uh, Ludlam's points of contention with the proposals is the lack of a paper trail associated with requests for information. For example, warrants are required to name suspects and leave a paper trail. He said, he said there have been a quarter of a million requests for metadata which have not required warrants compared to 3,000 warrant requests for phone tags. So, yeah, for that's phone ridiculous. tags. Yeah, so half a quarter of a million request for metadata now this metadata you might think oh what's what's the what's that hurt you know if they're gonna just grab some metadata from me well apparently as he goes on (laughs) so all the intimate detail including your latitude and longitude if you're carrying a phone around is being vacuumed up by an enormous at an enormous rate by a much larger range of agencies that do not need to allege any criminal conduct whatsoever uh, Ludlam said, with Telstra recently revealing organisations such as the RSPCA, Melbourne Council and the Blacktown Anti-Dumping Authority have all requested <coughs> metadata from Telstra. There are more than 200 people in the Federal Police authorised to stamp, the, stamp those applications for fishing expeditions to vacuum up the private data of Australian citizens. Well, there you go. I thought, I thought the, the, Greens, the Greens would have been all over it. I thought they would have loved it. Know that yeah. a lot of people know what's going on. But the, well, they don't want to hear exactly. They don't want to know about which protest they're planning and 
which corrupt uh, government they're going to uh, back this time around. Mm. So, so well, we... Malcolm, Malcolm Turnbull is much of the same opinion. And he's, but I'll tell you he's... what's funny. They carry on here about saying how there was, what was it, uh, a quarter of a million requests for metadata compared to 3,000 warrants for requests for phone tax, taps. Now, what's funny is if you, you are legally entitled to record the police, they can't stop you, there's nothing they can do about it if they pull you over for a stop or, or, or whatever. Um, but they always try to throw the, you're not allowed to do that, it's a privacy breach and it's the same as phone tapping argument at you. And then you can quite simply say, well, how come you're entitled to basically all the information? It's double standard, mate. That's what yeah, you're trying to is. say. Yeah, mm. but I'm saying they, you know, they try to legitimize taking a, a recording of them as invasion of privacy, like wiretapping, yet they'll go through and, and do this, you know. So, mm. I mean, do they know what's going on? Do they have any clue? <laughs> Well, well, Ludlam says, like, look, I don't, I don't think it should go down this far. Like, I probably didn't have too much of an issue with the data retention when I first read about it, but I think it's starting to get a bit. I've got a mass. I've always had a massive, massive issue with it because it's on on the surface, what they put in the newspaper is only they, you know, they 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 pretty it up to make it so you know, ah, oh, it's all right, it's not worried. But the actual legislation would scare the bejeebies out of you. Yeah, well, so don't get too complacent, people. Ludlam, that's, that's the problem. It's the data retention itself. I get, like Facebook does it, Twitter does it, not a problem. Google does it. They're free services we use. They collect data so they can throw ads at us so they know what their users are doing. That's fine. There's no viable reason. Well, actually, I can think of a couple. But for the most part, there is no reason for them to be constantly monitoring and gathering stuff right. from mobile phones and computers. There are some legitimate cases. Like I have heard of a couple of cases, and my brother was involved with one. He's an AMBO where they managed to get the location of this hiker who'd fallen. They got his location of his G- from his GPS. Oh, that's fine. Phone. I've got no problem so, with any of that. No, no. But I'm saying, like, so there are legitimate uses for the technology that they're, they're throwing at this. The problem is, as soon as the government gets involved, all those legitimate uses go out the window. That's right. Well, Mr. Turnbull said, as a matter of principle, if I am lawfully entitled to burn copies of the letters I have written to you, and the letters you have sent me in return, why can't I do the same to my emails? <coughs> Excuse me. If I can throw my diary and photo album in the bin, why can't I delete my Facebook page? Mm, yeah. Good point, right? Yeah, yeah, it is a good point. It's, Where is Malcolm anyway? We need him. Oh, look, he's keeping a low profile, <laughs> letting Tony Abbott take all the heat. <laughs> now, um, uh, Shane, did you have any uh, <coughs> comments on, on the data retention? Have you had any, any uh, experience or whatever with it, or, or how do you feel about this? Um, the only experience that, well, the only thing I know about it is when you mentioned the, whether the article mentions a kill switch and all that kind of stuff, I thought America um, put this to their government oh, about six, maybe 12 months ago, and and they yeah, voted it down. Yeah, lost, yeah. Um, and then the other thing that I've got experience with is the whole how the process used to be anyway when I used to work there, when people wanted information out of a particular large phone company that I used to work for. Um, it had to come from a government agency and then it had to go, there was a special kind of group set up within the, the phone company that dealt with those sorts of things. We couldn't take them on the front line as just normal customer service. Mm. So there were, back then at least anyway, proper processes in place. So. Yeah, Go protections. Blow, you, you couldn't just yeah. give out information, yeah. But yes. how much of that was just for show, too? I mean, if they want something, they're going to get something. They're not going to... Go well, they need a warrant. Well, if someone gives slaps a warrant on me and says, we've got, we, we've, got a, we, we've got rights to take your hard drive, well, that's a legitimate... Um, that's, that's, not a, that's not an abuse of, of the process or, or anyone's civil rights. But to, to march in... Look... Put it this way: They're not allowed, You can't march into a house and start taking stuff, right? They can't take my letters, no. my files, my uh, without a warrant. Well, why should they be allowed to take that just because it's electronic? Mm. Because it's not your data. As soon as the ISP gets involved, it's not no, in, your data. Incorrect. Will, if I've written it, it's my data. Incorrect. But it's because you're paying for a service to transmit it. No. Oh, yeah, I'm paying for the service. That's what I'm paying for. Then, if it's I'm in paying their for terms the service. conditions, but if no, it's, it's in not. Their terms conditions. No, so, civil rights abuse. If I write, that's like saying I've write, I've written a book and I send it to my agent, and the minute 
because I've sent it to my agent by email, it's not my book anymore. It belongs to the to the to the ISP. That's bullshit. Mm. Doesn't matter. If doesn't I've happen. written something, it's my intellectual property. It belongs to me. Simple doesn't as that. Mean, and happen. that's the law. That's well, the, the law, mate. Look it up. Because what what the, sort of what sort of scares me a bit about all this sort of stuff is is that like in the, in the US, you know, that they, they, yes, they put this to what to the government or the government put it to the people or whatever. It was voted down. Uh, but look, I just don't think that that we guys over here in Australia, I don't think we stand up for ourselves enough. I just really don't. I think I think this stuff just gets just steamrolled uh, over us, and we don't really don't really stand up enough. Uh, this should this be is true. this should be. Burnt. But I think part of the problem in that is we are technologically not really in the running for the most part. The average consumer in Australia really is behind the eight ball on most American, you know, a lot of the other countries. We don't have, well, we don't have the, the capability in a lot of cases like the internet uh, bandwidth and things like that. But we just, the average person just doesn't know. I mean, how many people do you work with during the day who say, oh, I hate computers, I don't even know how to turn them on? You know, like, mm. it's, it's a, a very much sort of society where you know someone will go to work they'll send an email that's it that's that's the exposure they have for computers anything that happens outside that they don't care their phone they pick it up they make a phone call that's all that that's all they want to do anything that happens in between that too bad you know like it's not my problem it's got nothing to do with me i don't use it you know yeah. and then whether that's, the that's, that's, that's got, right but <laughs> yeah sorry i was gonna say the, the problem that we've got is that people making these laws are of the same mindset Exactly. Mm. Yeah, that's right. I think I think I'm I'm with Eric. It's um, it, I, I, yeah, I don't want it in. I've, I'm I'm against it wholeheartedly. I'm and, against it, and it'll be it'll be voted down because um, good always wins over evil. That's right. No. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 hang on. Just watch Batman. When did this happen? <laughs> now, <laughs> now where? I don't know. I don't know. You must be living in Gotham City, Will. <laughs> <laughs> so now, no, I just leave an Ipswich. <laughs> so the senator has said, I senator has said that he he would encourage participants here today to respond formally, and my request would be forcefully, so that the government is left in no uncertain terms aware of the views, just not of the tech sector, but of ordinary Australian citizens about proposals like this. All right, but ordinary yeah. Australian citizens don't know about proposals like this. Well, that's why this he's, because they hide it. That's why he's um well, exactly. he's out there. That's not. The average person, mum and dad, Joe Blow, doesn't know about these issues. They didn't know about ACTA. They don't know about the last lot of proposals that got scrapped. They won't know about the next lot. And, you know, regardless of how many, whether it's us, whether it's news media, and very rarely is it, you know, television media, but 99% of those people are going to go, hmm, that shouldn't happen. Oh, well, somebody else can fix it. Mm. You know, and unfortunately, that's going to be the problem. All right, well, let, let's uh, move on because uh, that's, yeah, that, that's time to move on. <laughs> All right. Uh, who, Eric, have you got another story? Oh, look, do you want to have a, let's have a, let's have an Apple story, shall we? <laughs> All right, let's. Really? From you? <laughs> From me? <laughs> By Hayley Shuchikama. Ooh. <laughs> <clears throat> Apparently, Apple has ordered up to 10 million. Is my mic still bleeding, Glenn? Uh, it's not too bad. It's all right has ordered up to 10 million panels for his yet unannounced and unconfirmed iPad mini. Hey, Shane, are you a, uh, are you a uh, Apple boy or a PC boy or a bit of both? You swing um, both ways? Yeah, as I was saying in the, in the intro, I've got um, one of everything, so I'm not really fussed either way. I can, I'm a fence-sitter. I'm, I'm, I mean, my star sign's Libran, so that probably right. does something. So you, you, you haven't gone down the dark road of Android, have you? I've got an um, Android tablet, but that's only because I'm a cheaper. Right, okay. <clears throat> Just checking. <laughs> <laughs> Working out whether he likes game. you or not. <laughs> right, yeah, three to one. Right. That's right. <laughs> three to one, this is becoming <laughs> fair. <laughs> wrong. So anyway, so the, now let me just, I'm, this is a big long article, so I'm not going to read all of it. Um, the tablet, if it exists, if it's a big yes, um, the, the rumour is October 12th they're going to make, the send out the invitations to the event. And they'll be for sale in November. But if it exists, it's expected to come in at a price point uh, lower than the 10-inch tablet, obviously, mm, but slightly yep. above the price point of $199, which is the Kindle Fire or the Galaxy Nexus 7. Um, so in between, basically, the price point will be between an iPod Touch 
and an, and an iPad. So, like I said to Glenn, if this comes out, it'll be in everyone's Christmas stocking. That's what I reckon. Yeah, more, more, so more than I'll be, I'll be getting one. I'll yeah. be getting one. So, speaking of Apple, <laughs> as we were, as might, as well. we, might as well get them out of the way. Uh, as last week, as you, if you didn't know, it was the anniversary of Steve's job, Steve Jobs' passing. Now, Apple, yes. oh, you wouldn't say celebrated or commemorated, maybe commemorated yep. the occasion uh, with a video on the site. So you went to apple.com or .au or wherever you went to, wanted to go and you presented with a video. And it was just a little bit, a bit of a, a montage of what Steve's life, I suppose. Yep. Uh, when yep. you, when 30 it ended, seconds. Yep. And then after the video had ended, you could proceed into the Apple, sto- into the Apple site. So, um, yeah, that was, that was a nice little touch, I think. They really, obviously, they must miss him and... Yeah. Oh yeah! After that maps fiasco, they'd be missing him <laughs> like hell. <laughs> well, I heard. Did you hear that? There's oh, he had the antenna gate thing. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. He did. But what, what was the what was his answer to that? We're just not holding it right. You're holding it wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But that was the same. That was the same answer given when people complained about the purple lens flare in the new iPhone five. They just simply said you're holding it the wrong way around because apparently the, it's got a polarized lens on it, and people were That's taking different. people were taking. Take, people were taking pictures in portrait mode, uh, sorry, videos in portrait mode, mm. and the polarized lens obviously was flaring. So they said you've got to hold it in landscape mode, but um, apparently portrait and landscape is too much of a distinction for Apple users. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, hey, hey, oh, we know what a portrait <laughs> is. At least our bloody Android tablets aren't getting users at doorstop. That's right, they're not in the drawer. Uh, yeah, so okay. like, have, have they don't I, last long enough to go to the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> Have I told you how much I like my iPhone five? <laughs> yeah, so I told you how like how I love both of mine. <laughs> oh, get out of here! <laughs> hey, I've got a I've got some screen covers. Did you get a screen cover? I, you can't you can't see. No, it. no, I don't like screen covers. Oh, look, they're nice. I've got a I've got a I've got a back co- I've got a back cover though. You won't see it, but because you can't see and they're invisible. But I've got I t- a back cover. Clear. Yeah, I've got a back. My back cover's coming. All right. Well, uh, okay. Um, Shane, did you have any stories? Do you want to? Do you want to kick us off with a story of yours? Uh, yeah, I did. I think we might go with the Apple theme. Yeah, why I've not? got a. Oh, I've got a story here where uh, they probably rebounded since, but the um, it was in the Australian IT. I think I saw it. Apple shares dropped ten percent uh, from their September high. And um, basically, the story goes on to sort of say that it's um, due to the the hype of the iPhone five kind of you know, waning. Yep. Um, everyone's got it. Sort of, yeah. Yeah. Everyone's, everyone's got it. Yeah. Saying, Waiting for the um, iPad now. But yeah, su- yeah, that'll be the next one. Of- well, I suppose. Right. Look, as Apple's probably just right in the in the front and center of everyone's vision, and you know, like the share price. I suppose ten percent is a big, big price, yeah, big but margin. That's overall, 10%. it's not. Overall, it's nothing. It's a long term stock. You wouldn't worry about it. What are they? Seven hundred. <laughs> you got to remember. Seven hundred. Well, it was seven seven hundred and four. Seven hundred and four. It was. Well, so then they're the six hundred and seven seventy bucks. So now they're <laughs> don't forget. Don't forget when Steve Jobs died, the share price was three hundred and thirty eight. That was a year ago. Should have bought some. Okay. So before everyone starts getting too critical, let's look at the, the big picture. And, well, before the iPod came out, it probably wasn't even worth diddly. Yeah. Well, well 1997, no, it wasn't. 1997, it was $2.54. What are you talking about? Yeah, That's well, what I mean. So. It was diddly. That's why they brought him back to resurrect the company. Exactly. Mm. Yeah. Well, uh, and he did that. He did. He re- and, and, and more. So, uh, yeah, sorry, Shane. Was that um, any more with that one? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say the um, there's analysts that go on to say that at the moment they're um, they're achieving more than fifty percent per year um, on earnings, and they expect any time sort of around two thousand fourteen or after that that's going to drop by ten uh, percent. But that obviously doesn't factor in you know, new products and things mm. like that. Well, it might be. Yeah, but I mean, every stock drop. If it goes up a hundred percent, then drops ten percent. Does it really matter? No, no. no. There <laughs> might, I suppose like, it depends when you bought. There might, yeah, well. <laughs> there might be a small correction, but that's just that's just there. Oh, always these stocks are always going to go up and down. But if you mm. if you do, do your research properly and you and you you know you in it for the long term and you still got faith in the management and their products, well then okay. Now Microsoft yeah. Office apps are set for the iOS. So this is the story that came out. Oh really? Well, yes. Maybe <laughs> Microsoft sort of. Microsoft. So, hang on. Sources. 
sources close to the situation? No, no. no. I don't. You know. Oh no. You know I don't do sources close to the situation. I don't. I don't particularly <laughs> like those stories. But no. But this one is well, maybe bordering on that <laughs> situation. That, that scenario. Microsoft will release a native Microsoft Office app for iOS and Android devices in early 2013. Good. Ac- according. Acor- oh God, check. According all to right, the Czech right. Republic. The Microsoft Czech Republic arm. So according to the release, the Office app will be available across all Apple mobile devices, including the iPod Touch, Android, and iOS. So blah, blah, blah. It include Word, Excel, PowerPoint. Uh, in addition to Windows, Office will also be available on other operating systems, Windows Phone, Windows RT, Mac OS, Android, blah, blah, blah. You know, get, get sorry, it all. Hang on. Get it all in hang there. Hang on. Now. Office is already available on Mac. Didn't they uh, stop something or other with that? No. Hmm. I've got Office here. I've got Word, no. Excel. This isn't the full suite, though. Does it have access and publisher it, and all that? No, it's got, I'll tell you what it's got. It's got Outlook, PowerPoint, Excel, and Word. Yeah, it's only the basic pack. It doesn't have access. Well, no one uses, no one uses access. That's a piece of plus. No, but there's <laughs> the publisher. And... Okay, now, the Microsoft, um, Microsoft US Harm has slammed its Czech counterpart, telling, telling The Verge, who broke the story, information shared by its subsidiary was not accurate. That last quote's actually incorrect. You can jump on. YouTube and find the video of the phone call. Um, the, the press audio, conference. I guess it would be. Yeah. Uh, the Microsoft US um, actually, uh, the only thing they said was the date was not accurate. Oh, okay. They never actually uh, said well. the so actual it, release was not coming. They just said the date was not accurate. So it is well, coming. I don't know what they're worried about keeping secrets. They need all the publicity <laughs> they can get. <laughs> that's what I don't get. Well, that's what they're I not Apple. Well, that's what I thought when I read that story. I thought, oh, here we go. This could be some sort of little Apple little ploy. Oh, know? look, it's going to happen. Look, and I'll get it when it happens. I'll put it on the iPad. That'll be good. That'll be fun. I'll give it a go. Excellent. I mean, you need, yeah. but I mean, how often are you going to use, you know, doing full documents and oh, no. on your Maybe for opening them, that'll be all right. Just yeah. for maybe for reviewing document, but probably not writing them. But Glenn, now that you've got your tech neck, it'll be available on that. Yes, that's right. Well, I haven't got All it Microsoft yet. All Microsoft products. I haven't got it yet. Well, haven't you got it yet? No. It, did you? I've got it in. I got mine in twenty four hours. Yeah. Well, I thought it would have been pretty much uh, instant, like buying it on the internet. No. But, um, yeah. Well, I would have thought so too. But no, to me, it was twenty four hours. But do you know what? I couldn't buy it on the internet because it kept on. Well, the, that's why the the page kept dicking around at the credit card part of it. It didn't. It wouldn't. Because because were you buying it in the US? No. No, the Australian I, one. Yeah, because there's the 30% discount. Oh. So I got the 30% oh. discount and I tried it twice and it said, no, nope, can't accept your card. So I went stuff it out to ring them. And then that was like another 20-minute job just to ring them. And, and then, just keep an eye on your credit card. I guarantee yeah. there's three, three <laughs> entries on there. <laughs> yeah. Good on Microsoft. They know how to do things. Oh, but it was crazy. I just couldn't believe it. But anyway, I'm expecting an email. Well, this was what, when was this, two days ago, three days ago? So, Chase them up, mate. Chase them up. Well, I looked up. But the back. anyway, when looked, you do get it, yeah. all those all those things will be available to you, yeah. because um, that TechNet, it, you can get Mac software from there, everything. So mm, yeah, it's good. So I'll be I'll be uh, having a look, having a good look at that and downloading a few Windows eights to to keep my systems running nice and sweetly. So Only, with that thirty percent discount, it's still probably a huge price difference, isn't it? Still twenty percent dearer. <laughs> <laughs> it's um. It worked out to be what was the Australian price three thirty seven. Still dearer. It worked out to be about two. Th- and I bet 34. with these iOS and Android apps, I bet. Sorry, it'd be what? I was oh. saying with these iOS and Android apps, I bet either a we don't we don't get them, mm. or b we'll get charged. Yeah, probably, probably more than anywhere else. Oh, oh yeah, we will. Yeah, sure. Well, Apple uh, has uh, their own Office style thing on on the iPad, and it's what ten bucks, I think it is. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, keynote. Uh, it was a keynote pages and numbers. Well, here's a, a ten bucks. Here's another. Ten, um, like uh, no, it's. I'll tell you what it is. It's um, because yeah, it is. I think it is. I think it's nine dollars. It'd be nine dollars. But Microsoft will sell it in the states for five ninety nine. We'll, we'll, we'll be paying nine ninety nine for it. Mm. Thirty seven fifty. Yeah. The dearest software I've seen. Not unless you got a tech net. <laughs> you won't be paying jack. The dearest. So- <laughs> the dearest software I've seen. But does is- that work? Okay. <laughs> what? what are you saying, Will? There's a big lag going on here, Sammy. Yeah, I noticed that too. All right, how are we going with the lag? Who's got the lag? 
Uh, that's probably me. Wouldn't be surprised. All All right. Your videos disintegrated again. So. All right. Well, I'm okay now. All right. Well, we'll keep going. Yep. Okay. Uh, well, You're what? There, Shane. Shane. Shane's Hello. still there. Shane. Yep. Uh, ahoy. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. There, yeah. <laughs> By the way, Shane, don't wait. Just like, you know, talk. Just butt in. <laughs> Be rude like me. <laughs> Oh, well, so I while mean, the putting me up a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> so why we're um talking about like little Apple moments? So there's another little Apple moment I thought might have been uh, might have been coming down the Microsoft pipe, but the ad for Windows 8 had been leaked onto the internet. But oh no, no, I know, oh no, <laughs> that's going to go viral, that's isn't it? Oh, they really? I suppose it's probably a good place to leak it. The ads run for <laughs> under a minute and show the platform running on a tablet. They market the operating system as a playful experience, showcasing various touchscreen gestures and how, and how the OS can be adapted to individual needs. The operating system will be unveiled on the morning of October 26. PC, smartphone, tablet and laptop markets have already jumped on board in droves to develop offerings running the various versions of Windows 8. The advertisements have since been pulled off YouTube by Microsoft. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, playful. You know why it's, they call it playful? Because it's infantile. Because <laughs> it, it looks like kindergarten crap. Nah, it's all right. You'll get used to it. No, I'm not touching it. You'll have to. No, I'm not going to. Well, cancel your you technology. No, nah, desktop's plus. I, I would use it on a tablet, but I'm not using it on a desktop. I think it's good for a touch interface. It's not so yeah. good on a PC. I agree. I agree. I'd use it no problem on a tablet, but not on a desktop. No way. All right, Will. Well, that could coincide with the new laptops that are coming out, the new Acer laptops, I think it is, with the uh, flip screen. Dual. Yeah, yeah, dual flip, yep. Yeah, they'd be all right. Yeah, look, look, I've got it on my yeah. laptop, as I said. It's, <laughs> I'm it's, still not buying one. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about when they stop supporting Windows 7? They to. won't. Then I'll, go, then, then I'll go Windows 9. They're still supporting <laughs> Windows XP. Yeah, oh, yeah, not for much that. longer. It's only 10 years, mate. It's only yeah, 10 I years. I know. All well, right. 3.1 flop is to stop working, so I can't use those anymore. Oh, damn. <laughs> oh, what was that for XP? 3.1. Oh, that, that, even that 3.1 floppies, that was still about 9, wasn't it? 9 floppies? Um, Windows, 95, Windows 95 was 12. Oh, no, Windows 95 was 12, 12 floppies. Yeah. Windows 98 was 21 from that, memory. <laughs> yeah, and it was a piece of crap. I hope they were high and density. This twenty one that never loads. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's right. The last one. You're yeah, right. Or the boot disk, the very first one. <laughs> That's okay. It's when the last one doesn't load. That's. <laughs> oh, that's and you've been sitting there for two hours. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, oh god, those were shocking. the days. Those were the days. Yeah, those were the days. Now, Will, did you have any stories? Have you got something there you want to bring out? Yeah, but quickly. Um, my phone contract's up, and believe it or not, I actually considered an iPhone five. The reason I didn't get one... Is <laughs> then you woke up. No, no. Then I, you woke up. It's like, oh, what am I no, thinking? No. I, it's getting to the point where I need one just to prove how bad they actually are. So I was actually <laughs> going... I was actually going to get one um, legitimately because I got two phones up on contract. So I was actually going to get the smallest of the iPhone 5s. Right. Um, the problem is I can't because they're not available. So... I am going to get Look, it out. Mate, the... they are available, but not through... Um, if you go into an Apple store, any Apple stores near you? No. No? no. Well, if you walk into an Apple store, um, you can go in there and you can pick any carrier if you walk into an Apple store. Well, they've got, through, they've uh, got heaps of them. I it's the Telstra Telco and... stores that don't have them, yeah, but the Apple right. stores have them, yeah. I went to Telstra, who, who's, who I'm through, and they're the ones who are sorting my plan out, and they didn't have any. So I decided I'm going to get the Galaxy S3 4G. Uh, and I'm going to hang off on my other phone for a couple of months, and I'm going to get the new Note 2 when it comes out. Um, for a phone? But, yeah. But it's that- like holding a phone book up to your ear. <laughs> oh, it's not. Um, <laughs> hello? hello? It's not, hang on a minute. It's, not, it's only 5.5 5. 5. 5. 5. 5. inch. It's not that much bigger than the iPhone. The actual hello, screen Mom. size is not that How much bigger than the iPhone. Yeah, I'm good. Um, but having <laughs> yeah. said that... Yeah, yeah, see you later. For people who are buying the Galaxy S3 4G outright, just be warned that they, at the moment at least, because Optus are too stupid to flick the switch, they don't work on Optus 4G networks, which means they won't work on Vodafone, Virgin, not that they'd work on Vodafone anyway, um, and and those sort of things. So at the moment, if you're buying a phone outright, um, you pretty much have to use 
uh, Telstra as in carrier, which you would, to be honest, if you're going to use 4G and you want to take advantage of it, you pretty much have to use Telstra anyway. But just be aware, they are available. You can buy them outright, but you will have a drama. Apparently, Optus is in the process of fixing it. And when Optus says you're in the process of fixing things, in four years' time, they'll have it fixed. Optus yeah. said, hang on a minute, my phone... Wait, Glenn, hang on a minute, my phone's ringing. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Right, that's you'll, my Galaxy Note. You'll have to make sure that you change ears because you'll, you'll sunburn one side of your head. <laughs> but I've got, you know, I've got, I've got to hire a lackey to hold the damn thing up for me. <laughs> you do realise it's only five inches, don't you? Yeah, well, you know, don't be embarrassed about that. But it's actually it's the same. It's almost physically the same size as the iPhone. It's virtually no different. It's actually thinner. <laughs> oh, five inches? Yeah, it's widescreen. It's it's five 5.5 inches wide or 5.1 inches widescreen. It's not yeah. that much bigger than the iPhone. It's not yeah. well, Still- compared to the Galaxy S3. It's actually a little bit shorter than that. So oh, I'm just well, don't worry. About it. I'm just doing you up. Yeah. But it's, that's fine. It, it's still crap, but I'm still doing <laughs> it. I do have the Samsung Galaxy Tab, which is like a seven-inch screen, and it is a phone as well. And you do kind of need to. If you, it doesn't actually let you put up to its ear because it's either on speakerphone or you need to use headphones or Bluetooth. So <laughs> that's <laughs> always uh, exciting. Well, my, my son is using that at the moment because her phone died. So, and while we're waiting to, what is it? What is it with your place? Things die all the time. No, there was Telstra you know, phones and but computers Telstra, and Telstra took a phone that was working fairly well and just had a dodgy speaker in it, and they sent back a phone that doesn't work. Now, um, is well, that Telstra? Yeah. Well, well you well might. Done. You might just in case. Will you were waiting for the uh, new BlackBerry Ten release? <laughs> Before you say this, I actually read the headlines and it said BB10 release. I'm like, Big Brother 10? Haven't we gone past that? I'm like, BlackBerry did not even enter my mind. <laughs> yeah, I'm going That to- is a problem, isn't it? That's a problem for BlackBerry, isn't it? It so, is. When you thought it was some dodgy show. <laughs> exactly. Research in Motion says it's still on track to launch its BlackBerry 10 operating system during the first quarter of 2013. But analysts, oh, there they love, they, yeah, we love these analysts, are saying that analysts, the, so- sources close to the, system. That yeah. the software won't make its debut until later in the quarter rather than in Janu- January. Oh, that's, that's pathetic. Yep, so that's, that's them. Pathetic. Yep, they're gone. Yeah, they should change their name, you know. It's not, they're not research in motion. It's no research, no motion. <laughs> yeah, no it's, nothing. It's backward, they're useless. Backward motion. But, Will, why aren't you waiting for the Windows 8 phone? No? Don't, I not actually, interested? I, I did. Well, no. Once again, I actually did consider it because it's, it's very hard to sit here and say, yes, it's good, no, it's crap, if you don't have one. <sighs> I like the hardware of the Blackberries. Yeah, the hardware the is really, really. The hardware is beautiful. They've yeah. got to put Windows 8 on there or something like that. Um, yeah, they will. And, and the problem is, you know, whether it's Nokia, whether it's BlackBerry, whether it's uh, Motorola, they're all doing Windows 8 phones. And the problem is that I'm like, well, then what happens is you buy a Windows 8 phone and you get one that's got crappy software, crappy hardware. Some makes the experience bad, so you bag out Windows 8, but it's not Windows, it's the phone. So I'm like, That's right. uh, I'll just wait for some talented rep of a company who's... Someone's got to get smart. One. Someone's got to get smart. What, what Microsoft should do is can all... Go the whole... You know, do it properly. Can Nokia, can Samsung, can HTC, can them all. Just buy BlackBerry, use their hardware and put Microsoft Windows 8 on it, and, and it will be a screamer. That's what they're doing with Motorola. They're using yeah, Motorola, but Motorola is certified. Yeah, but that's pus. No, no, Get but that's, that's who they chose. Nokia, HTC Motorola. and Samsung have been quick to announce smartphones running. The upcoming Windows 8 mobile OS, Microsoft today sent out invitations for its WP8 launch event in the UK and the US on October 29th, four days after its Windows 8 launch. Well, good on mm. them. Now, just a, well, let's, uh, Shane, did you have another one? Do you want to go for another one? Um, I just want to ask a question about this Windows 8 and, and mobile phones in general. How much of a factor is it, uh, is the ecosystem, you know, the fact that you can sync Huge. things? And, and not, Huge. So it probably doesn't matter what sort of phone and the hardware, I mean, it does, but it, it's not a... Well, the, yeah, it's, it's part it's of the puzzle, problem. you're right. Yeah. Well, you're right. I think that if, if they don't get their ecosystem right, 
then it's 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 um, dead man walking, basically. Well, I mean, Google's trying to tighten it up. They're trying to get all these different variations on one you know straight line. Um, Apple's actually gone the other way a little bit. They have a little bit of fragmentation at the moment because they have you know five four different devices. So, um, but they control yeah. the manufacturer of those. That's their advantage. They do, but you know, like they've got to be careful they don't end up in the same situation. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean. The hardware shouldn't be an issue these days. There's only you know half a dozen, if that, chipsets. You know, there's the A A6 or whatever it is. There's ARM. There's you know, there's only ha half a dozen different chipset manufacturers. Um, there's really only one like radio, like 3G radio, Bluetooth, GPS chip that's pretty much all manufacturers use. So, I mean, what? They're all using five to eight megapixel cameras. They're all using 1080p screens now. So, I mean, why is there such a, dis a distinction between a really good phone and a really crap phone, regardless whether well, think, it's BlackBerry, whatever? Look, I think, I think Shane's pretty much on the money, pretty on the money for, for me anyway, because it was the ecosystem I, th I wanted to buy into pretty much. Um, yeah, I, I just I was taught, I keep having this argument with people. <laughs> I don't, they won't have it again. But I think... Um, Look, for me, it was just, yes, I can put up with the limitations of the, of the product. And I know it's got limitations. I can put up with them. But at the end of the day, it makes a phone call. It tells me where I am. And it, it lets it me works. access the internet. And it syncs the music and all that sort of stuff. And that's all I want it to do. I don't care about um, trying to stick USB keys into it. And all Fiddle that sort around of stuff. with it. And I don't care. I think um, from a, I was talking to a mate of mine who actually writes uh, apps. And he's saying it's now a pain to write app for the iPhone, iPad, because every iPhone, so the you know the four, the four S, the five, the iPad, um, they actually all have to have. They don't distinguish in the store, so each app has to have different resolutions, different pictures, different you know sounds, everything capable that that particular device. So. And one app now is can literally be four or five iterations of that mm. app in the same app. So what used to be a one meg app could now quite easily be ten because there's five or so, you know, variations on that. But that, that, that doesn't um, worry me. I don't well, care. it may because it, uh, it's slowing the developers down now because they have to write the same piece of software four or five times. So well, at the end of the day, there's still more people developing for iOS because with the Android or Nokia or Windows or whoever's making the these um, hardware pieces, um, there are many, many, many more variations, and that's the problem that Android's got. Mm. That's why well, no, everyone, not really, because even though it's Android, fragmented, it's still easier. Well, Android, you design one app and it works on all devices. Um, the, you that's haven't got to make. That's not what I've heard. I've heard that they've got a program for different screen sizes and the whole thing. No, you can. Is it HTML5 fix all that? Yeah, you, you can program for different sizes you, to optimize your app, but you don't need to. It will, will, one app will work. It will auto-resize. Sometimes it may not look right, and that's why, because the developers take the easy way out, and it's not, if it's a tablet program, it's not going to look the same on a small screen. And, but and, you, and I was going to say, and guess what renders now on Android and iPhone screens? The Aussie Tech Head web page. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so it does, before, which is a bit better than what it used to look. <laughs> before it was rubbish, but I spent a little bit of time and hey, presto! So if you you can now go to aussietechheads.com.au, look at the web page, and you can now just push the the video, and you can watch the video on your iPad on your device, your your portable device. How good's that? And as a as a Aussie Tech Head uh, hosting service, uh, you would. Uh, spread your knowledge to other people who wish to make their site also work on multiple devices? Uh, yeah, just... Um... <laughs> <laughs> because it, it is a common problem. You, you build a website in a browser, you know, for a browser or whatever, it's going to look different. Well, I think... Look, look there's no secret. I'm, I'm not a coder, but I'll, I'll use templ website templates and all this sort of stuff, you know, and, and the Aussie Tech Heads website's built with a thing called uh, Joomla, and you just get the right template, uh, you know, collapsible modules and probably variable widths and all that. So instead of like, say, you're saying your picture is, you know, 570 wide, well, it's going to be like a percentage or something. 
and so yep. and so then it just can expand in and out depending on what screen size you've got uh but yeah look you get you get a template it's just the template i had was just easy it was just it was just a pretty much a flick of a switch really and um it was just simple and now that the screens now render properly on on the ios and the android phones which is really good so now yeah so you can still zoom you know you, like you pinch zoom if you're if you're interested in some small writing on the site you can't see but at least the site renders it looks nice uh so go check it out it's uh, you can look, watch the video while you're on the bus go on the work how good's that? Hey? There you go. How good's that? Speaking of rendering, speaking of rendering on websites, mm. free to air TV networks in talks on joint online streaming service. I bet that's not Channel That'll Nine. That'll be good. Reckon that's Channel Nine. No. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, we'll see if they're still around. But uh, almost half of Australia's online adult population now watch watches professionally produce video content online prompting the free to air TV networks they, I suppose, so in the end they, they're going to trade a sort of like a like a Hulu for Australia yeah right so right. if they do that I which I hope they do um, that'll be good mm. that'll be good yeah so um, yeah so like, I think a lot of people and well obviously they're just not tech heads and stuff but you know with all these internet friendly uh, TVs coming out and you, you can speak to the stupid Samsung TV and say what you want it to do. So, um, Yeah, go on, call it stupid and see what happens. You say, <laughs> Samsung, please copy an Apple device. Make well, it for me. And, and I, I can um, do the same on the Xbox, you know. You just talk to the Kinect and away you go. You play this or whatever. Um, oh, did you get your Kinect, did you? Yeah, I've had it for ages. <coughs> I've had that for ages. Oh. Yeah, so that's okay. all. That's all good. So one more last thing. I just got one here for Google, just so we can put it to all bed and all that sort of stuff. But the Google as now, uh, Google brings magazines to the Australian Android users. From today, Australian users of Android devices are able to purchase magazines on the device. Google has announced magazines. Playboy, penthouse. ACP magazines, News Life Media and Pacific magazines are now available. Google first added magazines okay. to play in late June. But over here in Australia, we couldn't get them. So there you go. Of course not. No, nah, of course not. Of course not. Now look, did I have a did I have a graphic for that? I can't remember. Yeah, I think I did. Hang on, I'll find me graphic so it doesn't go it's to too waste. Too late now. There we go. The moment's gone. I oh, know. I oh, know. <laughs> Shane, did you have any more stories? Uh, the only other thing that I was going to mention was when we were talking about Microsoft stuff, but we can go back to it. Yeah. Was whatever. that Microsoft patches twenty bugs, including a critical word uh, word flaw. Uh, the last um, update Tuesday, they sent out 20 patches and bugs, including a critical word flaw. The word flaw infected all versions of Word back to 2003, and even Microsoft themselves got hit by it. Yeah, right. Well, no, look, well, I did... the, the bug fix was a piece of crap because it brought down my server. It started <laughs> my, it downloaded automatically at the office. Good, right? so it and wasn't just me. It my server, and then... It just it just crashed the uh, mail server. Piece of garbage. What do you people do? I had no problems. What are you doing? Yeah, but you don't. You're it, not running it, a mail server, dude. It, it brought down the, my file server. You've got a file server. Yeah. You got a lot of files. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mail <video>. files. <laughs> All right. So yeah. Fi- what you don't have a file server? <laughs> well, not a dedicated one. <laughs> What else am I supposed to do with the old system sitting there with eight hard drives in it? <laughs> well, one way to chew up the power. Probably on eBay. <laughs> no, they don't want them. I, I could, if hard drives weren't so expensive, I wouldn't need a file server. <laughs> Jeez. Um, no, well, yeah, but anyway. Um, now, <laughs> um, NBN, Eric. Yes. They're, they're, yeah, I saw this one. Yeah, you go for it. Uh, NBN have unveiled plans to disconnect copper and, copper and cable broadband services. So it looks like the time for the connected sites, for the first connected site. So time is coming to an end. The copper, what, are they going to rip that out of the ground or are they going to... No, they just switch it off. Yeah, they, would, they wouldn't want to rip it out. That'd be just a waste, wouldn't it? Yeah, That'd, you've got to have it redundant just in case, you know, you never know. Yeah, that's right. So they're going to rip it out of the ground and um, we've got a graphic. There we go. That's telephone exchange. <laughs> the first... <laughs> The first switch-off areas do not include the three initial trial sites in Tasmania, which are still considered a separate part of the network until later this year. So MBN has manually chosen a switch-off date. 
for the first 15 sites, as well as a as approximately 60 other areas built before the company completed agreements with Telstra that enabled the automatic switch off of existing copper and cable services. Uh, somewhere I read, oh, here it is, statistics shared by Hassel at the Comms Day Congress in Melbourne this week indicated nearly half of the residents, 44%, who had adopted fibre services had adopted had opted for 100 megabits a second broadband speeds. So that's good. They ta- they're, u- they're using it. They're using it. With yeah, a 25 good, good. megabit speed for, for tier... What's that? With the 25 megabits a second speed tier second most popular at 34% of services. So at least they're not just uh, doing ADSL speeds, as I think the lowest plan on most of the... Most of the uh, yeah. ISPs yeah. are off. Well, it seems pointless. Why would you? Why would you switch? Mm. So at, at speeds like this, that, uh, these ladies are going to be busy. Going back to the whole conversation we we're having earlier about Australia being so far behind in that sort of respect, what's with throttling? And you know, it, what's the deal? Why, why do we yeah, even I have don't it? Get it? Either I don't get it. But it's, throttling. I mean, why, why throttle yeah. it? Well, you know, throttling or, or speed speed control. You know, like why? Just why not just open, turn the taps because on? Because it allows them to charge more if you want to go faster. That's all it is. It's just a money making scam. Yeah, I realise that, but that's why I don't understand what, why. Like, are they not making enough money? Well, I can tell you why. <laughs> You're talking sp- throttling sp- uh, speeds. Yeah. As in, as but, but how fast do you want to go? Well, no, you 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 either buy the twenty megabit down speed. On the NBN or the hundred, you you pay differently. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? No, we we're saying why do they just why do they bother but throttling? I, I don't get. It. They throttle speed and they throttle data cap. Why both? Why not just have one or the other? You know, I just don't. I don't know. Why not? Why have either? Why not well, just think, have an unlimited? Well, I, I think. Well, <laughs> if you put your if you put your not that easy. If you put your telco shoes on there for a minute, you'd probably see that, like. If, if you had everyone go on hell for leather, the thing would just, yeah, it's, it's just grind, grind, to, a grind halt. to a halt. Yeah, yeah but yeah. everybody won't. This is the but thing. They will. Like, there's, yeah, there's, you they will. Be, yeah, no, I, I won't. won't. <laughs> but people <laughs> will. <laughs> will. There will be some people who will, but they're the same people who are using as much as they can now. So it's if you actually up the entire network speed relative, relatively, it's not going to change. Uh, do you know well, if they've got data caps... Then you'll go over your data cap sooner, and then you're off the grid for a while. That's fine. I'll tell you. I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you something for free. Now, when you when you're doing well, download, <laughs> when you're downloading torrents, or whenever you're downloading, right? I'm not saying you know the 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 creative common ones that are, that live on the internet. Now, when you're downloading, yeah, when you're downloading those. Now, in days gone by, you're downloading the, the, the normal, uh, normal, you know, compressed, easy, fast version. But now, yep. data caps are higher, speeds are higher. I f- don't you find that you are downloading a higher quality video? Nope. Yes, you are. You are. Well, the, the, yeah, you do. The bigger, do. the fatter the pipe, the faster the speed, mm. the, the higher the quality that people are putting up there. That's right. Yep, ex- yeah, yeah, that's right, that's right. Just because they're putting up higher quality doesn't mean you have to download higher quality. But you do. You want to. I want but to. you will. No. Well, Why? see, I don't I know. Do. I, can't, I, can't, I can't really answer that because I don't download anything like that. I stream. If I want to watch a movie, I stream it. So I don't bother downloading yeah, it. But what quality it. do you choose? Well, you don't have a choice, really. Well, you do. Apple TV, you can pick HD or SD. Yeah. Three gig file or one gig mm. file. And plus, well, an average movie, an average movie is, you know, what between eight hundred and twelve hundred megs. So I'll tell that's you what, just SD, SD. Yeah, yeah. I'll tell well, you. You can't really stream any quicker than that. Well, you can. I stream three gig movies all the time. I'll t- yeah. Here. I'll tell you what. I'm disappointed in just quietly. Uh, I'll, I'll, Shane, did you have an opinion on the speeds and caps? What um, what what what's your cap, Shane? What, who are you with? In uh, you would you'd be uh, in IONet, I'm guessing. No, Telstra, because I can't Telstra? get anyone else um, okay. where I live. And um, plus also having work for me. Um, my out. opinion, I mean, it's better than what it used to be where they used to charge you extra for going over yeah. the cap. Yeah. Um, so given the choice, I'd rather that be throttled. Um, having a couple of kids, I've recently bumped up my cap um, because, you know, I was going over it or they were going over it. Um, but unless you do things like, I mean, we don't download movies and all that kind of stuff. Um, if anything, we watch the movies on Foxtel. Yeah. Um, 
the only time we kind of go anywhere near the, the cat, which is only, it's only 200 gig, um, is like at the moment where a couple of my machines have died. So I'm going to be downloading things like service packs and um, and games and all that, reinstalling games like Battle Pass 3 and all that kind of stuff on a couple of machines. So it'll probably you know, approach the limit then. But 200 gig for me is right. 200 gigs, a fair, it's a fair whack. I think Glenn's on 200 too, aren't you, Glenn? Yeah, and, and look, I, re- I just went through some of my past history, and oh, seriously, I'm lucky to I'm lucky to hit a hundred. Like, I don't I, I don't yeah. download that much. Um, I do the show like this, and uh, I, I do what I have to do. And I, yeah, look, I think, but I think this month's been a bit abnormal. I think I'm up to about 120. So, and, but, and that's only yeah. because you find that when you do find something that you want, if it's available in bearing, like YouTube, you get on YouTube, you're you're pushing the HD button. You're not going to suffer the yeah. the SD the three the two forty. I can't even I can't even watch three hundred and sixty without waiting for half half an hour for it to buffer. Oh, well, that's but that's not. But you got a better system, will? That's what I mean. Like, cable. You get a better. Yeah, I know. That's my point. That's you completely a, crap. If you got faster speed, well, is that because it's Optus or is it just because you're what? What's the what's the problem? It there? doesn't seem to matter. Really Every computer I use. Well, no, it doesn't matter. But if I use it on my home computer or my mate's place or whatever, it doesn't seem to make any difference. I get massive, good quality HD here on on the on the on the Telstra. There's actually a um, oh, you gotta be kidding me. There's actually a, you can go to youtubecom slash myspeed or my underscore speed hash, and what it does is it actually it's the only video on YouTube, mind you, that loads in HD for me, but it um, actually shows you all your data for. Um, <laughs> What's that? Shows you all your... Oh, it's a phone. <laughs> it's his ringtone. <laughs> um, and it it shows you what speeds, what your average speeds are, how much you use, what resolutions you look at, how long it takes to do things. You know, so it's um, it's um, quite good. All I know is. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I just, I don't know. I can't <laughs> load HD. But that, that, um, so that must be weird. That must be. Hang on, we'll just wait for that phone call to finish. <laughs> I just muted him. Oh, good on you, Will. Okay, so, um, yeah, but if you, had, if, you, if you had a system that worked, you would go a higher quality. That's, that's all I'm saying. That's, that's where I'm going. Well, yes. then again, it depends on what you're watching, too. No. I, I very me. rarely find the need to use HD. Uh, when you're watching certain things, you've got to have HD, right? And, you, look, and you'll be wanting to watch HD when you're on Bondi Beach getting free Wi-Fi. That's what you yeah, want to do. Yeah, good luck with that. Waverley Council has unveiled plans to trial a free Wi-Fi network at Bondi Beach and the surrounding areas in order to determine the... That'll crash in five minutes. <laughs> the trial, which would cost between 34000 to $50,000 to establish... And twenty five thousand dollars a year to maintain. What is going on? Is so that will last six months? Yeah, that's not worth it. That'll be that'll be so overcrowded. They're gonna have, like, they just put an ADSL two lineup. <laughs> yeah, it'll be like Macca's Wi Fi. Eleven. Yeah, it's rubbish. Mm. Like and Macca's Wi Fi isn't even quick enough for me to stream Twit, which is fifty six k a second, which yeah, is dial up speed. Oh, no, I, anyone... I actually can. I can actually stream twit.am on a dial-up modem. I have done it just to prove that it can be done. But you can't even do it at Macca's. Have you got the <laughs> um, Twit app, Eric? Yes, I do. And how does that – can you – does it stream for you in video? Yeah. Mine doesn't mine don't stream video. Yeah. Oh, look, the, the, <clears throat> the current upgrade is the, – the, whoever – that's, that's not your bandwidth. The previous one to that. Is a lot better. Was a lot better, mm. but if you go to um, live.twit.tv on your browser on your iPhone, the, yep. and stream the video from there, it's a lot better. Yeah, mm. but I but I paid a dollar for the app, and it doesn't work. Well, but anyway, too bad, thinking mate. that's something to do with the. I remember something about the app, Apple in terms of service saying you can't stream video over three G. You can only do it over Wi Fi, or they change that. Well, no, my Wi Fi just doesn't okay. work. It, it sort of stutters and carries on, but but it doesn't matter. Yeah, look, that's not that's not your that's that's the app. Yeah, I've, yeah. I've got the same problem. Yeah, yeah. There's there's, there's an Funnily issue. Funnily enough, it works perfectly on Android. Funny that. Oh, I'm gonna hmm. I'm gonna trash me phone. Now, <laughs> U.S. U.S. researchers 
U.S. scientists have developed new software that can accurately measure greenhouse gas emissions down to individual buildings and streets. Whoopie-doo. The system combines information from public databases with traffic simulations simulations and energy consumption models. Researchers believe it could help identify the most effective places to cut emissions. Did you like that story? That's a good one. Yeah, uh, well, got, got hey, one. Eric, can you do us a favour? Can you just check your headphone plugs again, please? Is it buzzing? Yeah. So now there's another one here. Skype has been targeted by worm malware infecting Windows PCs. When users click on an instant message saying... LOL, is this your new profile pic? They unwittingly download a file containing a Trojan horse malware file. This opens a back door, allowing hackers to hijack infected PCs and, re and recruit them into the botnet army. Users can be locked out of their machines and held to ransom. Oh, my goodness. Well, that, that's a, Isn't it funny how some of this Microsoft, Microsoft takes over a product? <laughs> it gets susceptible oh, to viruses. Isn't it shocking? <laughs> Well, it's I've actually, so bad. Well, this thing, this this uh, this worm, according to the specialist, is a, a variant of a well-known worm, Dorkbot worm, which Dork bot. <laughs> which probably made by one, which had been uh, oh, Beauty and the Geeks on the night too, which <laughs> which had been spread. <laughs> Good God! I don't know you. I don't know you. Who are you? <laughs> So, uh, so this Dorkbot worm, which has been spread by social media platforms such as Facebook and Twitter, when the worm infects a computer, it sends out the LOL message to the user's contact list. And I think I have had a uh, a few messages with that, so people I know must have um, clicked on it, I guess. Damn Skype. People, yeah, I mean, once again, that's, we, that's why we, we don't use it. forget that people are just normal human beings. So not everybody's tech savvy. Not everybody has a clue about anything. So when we do what we do and we do these shows and we, you know, we do the show notes, we put out tweets, we put out Facebook updates, we do a lot, but, but we're only reaching people who are of a certain level of tech knowledge anyway. Mm, yeah. Um, and most of our listeners wouldn't fall for something like that. But I'm sure some people would accidentally click on it or would click on it and go, oh, hang on, I shouldn't have done that. But for the most part, they're not going to because they're going to realize something sus, especially mm. if you suddenly get 4 million messages saying the same thing. Um, but the problem is it's the same as the whole Indian Windows schmoz or ringing saying you've got a virus. Most people fall for it because most people don't know any better. And the people who don't know any better are the people who aren't getting the help they need to know better. Yeah. Agree. That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Glenn. That that helped. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> now, that's what I was going to say before. Something we were talking about movies and streaming and all that sort of stuff. Now, and, uh, you know, the new some service that's going to come to Australia, free to wear stuff or whatever it was. Now, something I've been disappointed with, I've got it in my little hand here, is um, I've got a letter through the week or last week. It's from Quick Flix, and you can sign up to this free $55. Uh, free six-week trial, if you wish. Uh, quickflix.com.au forward slash Velocity exclusive. So you must be a member of Velocity, and all you do is punch in your Velocity number, and away you go, you get the, the thing. So, well, I wasn't interested in, you know, getting the movies through the post and all that rubbish. And I thought, oh, yeah, 55 oh. bucks, I'll just, um, you know, stream a few. I'll stream 55 bucks worth, no worries. Do you know, their movie selection is not the same as, say, their physical collection, and their, their streaming collection is pus. It's like Doris yeah, Day. Yeah. Doris, In Australia. Yeah, Doris Day uh, meets bloody Mary Poppins. It's just rubbish. It's, rubbish. Everything in Australia to do with online media is crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we don't exist. Disappointed. You know. Disappointed. Although one, thing, one story that we haven't spoken about and I haven't seen in the uh, lineup and I just, just remembered about it, uh, YouTube has changed their takedown policy now. Um, instead of a bot giving a, a false positive and just pulling down the video, um, basically now the onus goes back onto the owner of the video to say, yes, that's mine or not. And then once the owner's decided it's their video, it's up to them to decide if they want to take it down or put ads. Um, and then the thing is, if... Um, it turns out to not be their video and they claim it, then 
you you have a legal recourse to say, well, no, hang on, that's not your video, it's mine. You need to prove that you own that video. So they've actually stepped up now, and the last appeal is actually done by people instead of by. And have we lost algorithm? It? So Ooh. we may. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, Will. We just we you just paused for a minute. A bit of a lag happening. Mm. So, yeah, so... Um, no, that was actually me. <laughs> all right. <laughs> so, where, where were we? Where were we? Um, I, f- I forget. Wow, lag. Well, it'll, it'll catch up. Give it time. It'll catch up. If it doesn't, well, we're just about finished anyway. Um, all right. What are you doing, uh, Glenn? Sorry? What is that? There is a lag in there. So where have you, where you been? Where have I been? Yeah, it's massive lag. That's you. It's, it must be me. But anyway, well, I'm just going to push on and see how we go. Um, look, I've got one more story, and then we'll do a quick run around the grounds to see if anyone else has got any more stories. But I've got a story here about Looper. I've never heard of it, but apparently it's a movie. It's um, the director of... It's supposed to be a good movie. Yeah, the, the director of time travel thriller Looper, Ryan Johnson has released a downloadable commentary track for his fans to listen to as they watch the film in the cinema. Hmm. How good is that one? Not bad. That's different. That's a good idea. Yeah. So the track which is um, available... Oh, can, did you unmute um, Shane? Will? Uh, he can unmute himself. He should be able to. Yeah, I'm un- unmuted. Good. Yep. <laughs> the uh, track Sorry which about is, that. That's all right. The track which is available online is designed for the audience to play on their MP3 players. Looper... Stars Bruce Willis and Joseph blah blah blah. Direct, the director added, the commentary was totally different uh, from the track that will be featured on the DVD release, being a bit more technical and detailed. So he said instructions on how to synchronize the MP3 to the film were in in the introduction, and also advised cinema goers to think of other audience members by putting any glowing screens in their pocket. So um, yeah, it's not a bad idea, I, but that just means that you're gonna have to see the movie twice, doesn't it? Really. Well, I was just oh. saying, it's actually a really good ploy, ploy, because ploy, dickhead, um, because <laughs> it does encourage people to go and see it twice, and and <laughs> either that or they'll actually figure out, probably not in Australia once again, but in America and you know San Francisco and, and California and places like that, they'll probably might even do double screenings specifically for that reason. Hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. Well, yeah, but uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it just means you're going to go and see it twice. But anyway, it's a good idea. Like you're going to download the uh, MP3 you, you, you and you watch once at the movies, and when it comes out on DVD, you watch that's right. It and then you go and get the you get you've got yeah, your... but they'll mess you up because they'll do a director's cut or something, and it'll be like 11 minutes longer, <laughs> and the commentary won't match you up. <laughs> yeah, that'll annoy you. Yeah, that's right. Now, look, I think I'm through everything I wanted to say this week. Um, has anyone else got anything pressing? Uh, let us see. On their on their little oh. news agendas. Uh, well, just one more, just one more. Yes. Microsoft story, not an Apple. I had a choice between Apple and Microsoft. I I chose Microsoft. Oh, good. Uh, <clears throat> CEO Steve Ballmer's latest shareholder letter declares that Microsoft officially officially, I wonder who he's copying, is a devices and services company now, emphasising the company's hardware desires. So they're going down the Apple route. They want to build all their hardware and put all their own software on, and that's a good move. Yeah, I thought so too. I thought exactly that. It's in the show notes, so go and have a look at that, people. Yep, so all the show notes are available on uh, the website, aussietechheads.com.au, after the show uh, tonight. And you just go to, oh, somewhere there, there somewhere you'll find them. Uh, and now, look, just going, Shano, just going through your little notes here. Is there any others that you want to... So flying saucers are real after all. I was going to do that one, yep. Yeah, what's that uh, one all about? Basically, it, uh, from the story, when this thing comes up in front of me. US finally admit to experimenting with yeah. flying saucers. Yeah, they're, they're one probably... of those ones where, um, you know, um, after a certain amount of time, they can release information to the general public, and obviously it's now time for them to finally admit to that they were um, experimenting with flying saucers. Um, you know, probably... It's the whole Area 51 kind of thing that mm. people kind of always speculated about. Uh, the story goes on to say that um, no one would have actually seen these particular flying saucers flying around because apparently they weren't that crash off and <laughs> they did more crashing than taking off, apparently. <laughs> Probably. Um, 
but yeah, so it was just it was just one that kind of caught my eye that was you know, it wasn't strictly Microsoft, Apple, or Android, and I've got to admit, good. <laughs> you, you're Area also, 51. You're also up on Mars. Shiny metallic objects found on Mars. Yeah, that's a um, story where the one of the rovers, I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head, where um, it was just digging up some soil for, to do some analysing and, and, and the astute sort of uh, scientist that obviously was watching what was going on saw a tiny little shiny thing and thought that was a bit strange and when they closed in on it um, with the camera that was on the rover, they saw that it was some sort of bit of metal. At the time of the story, NASA sort of didn't say officially what it was. They weren't sure, but they were just assuming that it was something that had fallen off the rover. Um, it just seemed to be a bit weird how it was kind of, you know, a little bit buried underneath the soil and that kind of stuff for it to have fallen off the rover. you think it'd be kind of laying pretty much on top of the soil. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, just a, a, again, another one from left field. Yeah, so that, look, I've just thrown up the, the website there, and yeah, there's a little bit of shiny little stuff there. So, um yeah, go on, go and check that one out. Now, this this one here caught my eye in your show notes. Actually, the new boxy box might be the set top box we've been waiting for. Well, I'd say it is. I think this is what is needed. I think this is this is mm-hmm. what we've been waiting for. And the new boxy box is now with free to wear. So that's great. Right. How's, hmm. how's that different to the T box and a couple of other things that we've got floating around? Uh, the boxy well, box is much more versatile to start with. And T box, oh, a lot of str- it's looking like an Apple TV combined with a Foxtel box, isn't it? Yeah, and then sort of. Yeah. Well, the T, the T, the T box. How how would it differ? Uh, the T box, the boxy box. You can import videos or whatever, or or um, map to anywhere. Or, I, or you could with when I had boxy on the yeah, PC. it's like a media center as well. Yeah, the the T box is only. Uh, the T box is only if it's in your My Documents videos folder. I think it is that it will stream. Uh, also with T box, look, there's a couple of other little little things. I think it, yeah, the T box is quite good. If if it could if it could um, you could map it around your network, I think it would be a lot better. I think that'd be good. Yeah, the biggest mm. difference between the T box and the boxy box is what's that? The T the boxy box is, has got nothing to do with Telstra. All right, oh, I don't matter. I don't care. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you, like, like after, so it's probably not going to crash every seven seconds. Well, my T box doesn't crash. It's yeah, it's funny, you know. A lot of people say they're great, and then there's just as many people, and a mate as has one. He's got on his third one now, and it literally like crashes probably twice a day. What T box? Yeah, mine has never crashed. I don't know what you guys do. I know do. it's it's weird. <laughs> he, I what think you, you, you. I think you must infect them, Will. You might no, go no, over. I know a few people who have them and don't have. Give them a virus. I know a lot of people who have them and don't have any problems with them. But there's just one particular one that a matter once got that, as I said, he's been through three of them. And whether it's something in his connection, it's not like he even does anything to them. He doesn't know enough to do anything to them. Yeah, <laughs> so, right. you must have the Midas touch, your fellow. Might come <laughs> come to come around here and wreck, trash my place. <laughs> and now, um, yeah. well, this will be the Will. Have you got any more stories? This is one quickly. Have you been to uh, eBay.com.au lately? Oh, uh, last week. Yeah. Have you noticed the new design? No. Um, <laughs> they've basically refurbished. Their, they've been tweaking it a little bit, and it's really annoying because they split automotive. They used to have car bikes and boats and car parts all in the same category. Now they're separate categories, but um, they've basically borrowed the layout from Pinterest. Um, and they pretty much create a feed in the homepage where things you've searched for or things that you like or you can create your own personalized feed um, basically appears on the homepage so you, you can set it up and scroll through them and, and stuff you know stuff you'd buy or, or sell regularly all appears there. Um, That's like, like an Amazon. It gives you your search history. Yeah, Is that right? Is that what you're but more so like um, it's, all, it's a visual sort of thing it's uh right. it's like i don't know if you've ever been to pinterest.com it's it's kind of like looking at a, a whole heap of uh photos scattered on the table and you flick through them and and whatever so it's i don't know it'll be interesting you see i mean ebay you went there because it was simple and easy to use so it'll be interesting to see if it complicates things any mm. yeah yeah you'll get used to it will I do like their old, their new eBay logo though. It looks like Google's old logo. 
<laughs> oh, those old eBayers. They love it. All right. Well, I think that's just about uh, brought it to the end of the show. It's been a, a little bit longer than normal, so uh, thanks for sticking with us. And uh, so I, I guess we'll, we'll run through how to contact us. So emails. Oh, geez. Here we go. We've got uh, Glenn, Eric, or Will at aussietechheads.com.au. Uh, and our Twitters are... I'm at Aussie Tech Heads. Will is at Mr. Tompkins and, and Eric is at Eric Franco. Eric with a K. And Shane, what are your contact details? Uh, you can get me on Twitter as well at, at Shane1973 and Shane spelled S-H-A-Y-N-E. Um, and that is probably all I've got so far. I haven't actually right. got an Aussie Tech Heads email address yet, but I um, hope to get one. All right, so that's uh, so just uh, contact Shane on the Twitter, and that's about all. Don't forget the hosting. Uh, we've got the hosting going on, and they're nice, uh, good little plans. Australian servers, so uh, it'd be nice and fast page loads for you. So if you want a fast, fast website, uh, go and check that out and uh, build one yourself. WordPress installs, everything is e-commerce. Just click of a switch, there you go. That's how I now play. next week. Next week I might try and get on back onto the audio books. I think audio audible. All right, so we'll get. So we might do that. Yes, we got to. Um, yeah, because uh, next week we'll uh, Garth will be back. Oh, there's there's heaps going on. Heaps going on. All right, I've got another video the, to to do up and everything. So all right, so good stuff. Um, that's about it. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Probably. I don't, <laughs> probably. <laughs> I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Oh, um, yes, I have forgotten something. Thanks, uh, Brad and TechWebcast.info. Uh, for the for allowing us to replay the show before Aussie Tech Heads each Thursday night. And don't forget, if uh, you want to join us live, it's 7.30 p.m. Queensland time, uh, which is 8.30 p.m. Southern States, uh, 5.30 Western Australia, and probably about 8 o'clock Central, uh, I think. Don't take that for gospel. <laughs> <laughs> I should write all this down, shouldn't I? It's on the webpage. I did write it down. It's on the webpage. Go to the webpage. Have a look. It's all The times are all there. All right. So uh, thanks, boys. Thanks, Shane. Hope you had fun. No worries. Thanks for having me and sorry for the interruption. Oh, yeah. That's oh, all right. Don't worry about it, mate. It's good. We, ju- we, <laughs> just, we just muted you. That's all right. <laughs> so uh, thanks, Will. Thanks, Eric. And uh, No problem, mate. Right. Thanks, everyone, and hope you have a happy week, and we'll see you all next week. Bye-bye.